questions or you have answered go to my point side. of inquiry. I've answered your question. No, you have yes, not. Ms. Del Benny, are you going to ask questions? This yeah. regular order, Mr. Chairman. an opportunity to. I'm going to yield to Ms. Del Benny, but I will assure okay. the chair that I'm going to take this matter up and make sure that what's good for the Republican side is also good you for the Democratic side. You will see both sides handled equally the same way. And I would like for Ms. Del Benny to be able to, answer, to ask her questions without interruption. The chair will decide what takes place. Please, Ms. Del Benny. Thank you. Um, first, Mr. Chair, I'd ask unanimous consent to submit two letters for the record from victims and their families asking the majority for the ability to testify at this hearing and also in the last Congress. Without objection, but uh, I don't think you were here when I stated that the Democrats had the opportunity to have those people sit at the table um, and they chose not to do it, but it's, it's entered for the record. Um, it's, I, I, I wish they had the opportunity to represent themselves. Um, when we're, in the interest of transparency, I, my first question is for you, Mr. Vary. Um, you support transparency in terms of the victim, information on victims' exposure. And um, I wondered, do you also support transparency for asbestos corporations, the ones that you've represented, so that they can be more, th more forthcoming with information about the name and location of asbestos-containing products, work sites, and exposures? Would you support congressional legislation to do that? I repeat my answer that um the plaintiffs know that information. The plaintiffs who settle know how much. But my this could be pay. publicly available information, which would be important for others to be aware of as well. What will be in the interest of, the of existence, transparency? The existence of a settlement is a matter of public record in the tort system. So to say that my client, or any client of mine, and I'm using a hypothetical because I'm not here on behalf of a particular client, but the fact that a client settles has to be a matter of public record and is on a docket. So the same information that's being requested here, which is that what's the basis of the suit? That's in a complaint. Did my client get sued? Yes. Did the client settle? This it's is already a, in. Well, I, it seems like there's an inconsistency between the depth of information you'd require from victims and the information required from corporations. That's disappointing that uh, we, we talk about transparency, but we're not willing in legislation to look at this in an equal-sided way. Uh, Mr. Inselbuck, I wanted to ask you to talk about some of the state legislation that's also happened in the interest of transparency in Ohio and Oklahoma and other areas. I wondered if you could respond to some of the issues on transparency and also what you've seen the impact of state legislation so far. Huh. Transparency is a funny word. Uh, the, Mr. Vary says, well, the plaintiffs know what they know, and they do. Uh, but the plaintiff who knows about his settlement when he's a litigant doesn't know about the other fellow settlement. And it's the other fellow settlement and how much that was that would be of interest to that plaintiff. And that's what Mr. Vary and his clients don't want anybody to know about. And yes, the fact that there was a settlement, that goes on a docket someplace, but not the amount of the settlement. That's never disclosed. And it's never disclosed because the defendants don't want to disclose it. What they're trying to accomplish is to get from this Congress a kind of lending library of information about hundreds of thousands of trust claims filed. And in companion legislation throughout the states, they are trying to enact laws and have been successful in some jurisdictions that would require plaintiffs, before they bring cases in the tort system to trial, to first file and resolve their, tort, their claims against the trusts. This will shift a number of the values in how cases are resolved in the tort system and will reverse the rule that we've had long standing in the tort system that the plaintiff is the master of his case and decides who he sues and who he settles with and when. And the whole purpose of this is to get unreasonable reductions and delays in the, in the tort system based upon this ironic request for transparency in the trust system. I would also add Mr. Uh, uh, Brickman would like you to believe that the information that was so-called withheld from the Garlock defendant is information that the, the defendants in the tort system never have. Nothing could be farther from the truth. I suspect that Mr. Vary, who has been in the tort system for 25 years, has an extensive library on where any one of these tort system plaintiffs 
can collect from trusts just based on their work history. And if he doesn't, he can buy it from Mr. Scarcella, who sells it to the public based upon his ability with a computer to just plug in all of the places where trusts will pay and, and cross-rough that with the work history of any one of these plaintiffs. The defendants aren't missing anything. They know everything. They want this list so that they can further prevent asbestos plaintiffs from pursuing their legitimate claims in the tort system and offsetting, and they want to offset the plaintiff's claims in the tort system with things they would not otherwise be entitled to. Thank you. I know my time is going to expire, so I yield back, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The uh, chair now recognizes Mr.